How to build the Black Gates Twin Steam Engine, Part 18. Various layout permutations and mounting the reversing valves. In this video series, all about building two Black Gates Twin Steam Engines from kits. I've tried to show various methods of connecting the engines together to make a quad engine. In my opinion, the only way that is practical is the tooth belt system. That really does work very well. Admittedly, it doesn't look too steam engine like, but then do bear in mind that most steam engines did transmit their power using belts, or even ropes around the flywheel in some mill engine applications. What I'm doing at the moment is dismantling the engines, removing them from the rough piece of wood that they were screwed onto. I just used some small countersunk wood screws, and these are now being removed and put back in the box. This screwdriver has two good things going for it. One, it's magnetic, so it's really good for removing screws like this. And the other good thing is that it is made by Barco. I know I'm always singing the praises of Barco products, and I think it's pronounced Barco. I don't have anything whatsoever to do with the company, and I always buy the things that I mention and review. And the reason that I go on about Barco products so frequently is they really are very good, and I enjoy recommending good quality products to my viewers. In this part of the clip, I'm removing the silicone rubber piping that was temporarily fitted so I could run the engines. This silicone rubber piping is very useful stuff to have in the workshop, and to buy this tubing via eBay. Time to remove the centre bearing from the piece of wood, but first I'm removing the tooth belt pulley. If you've been watching the series, you will realise that the centre bearing is not just a piece of brass, it's sleeved in phosphor bronze, so it should wear very well. This was also secured to the temporary base using six countersunk wood screws. And now all I'm left with is the base. Before making a permanent installation, it's always a good idea to mock it up using a rough piece of wood. In this clip, I'm removing the first of the tooth belt pulleys from the crankshaft of engine number one, and here goes engine number two's pulley. These Blackgate's twin engines don't require flywheels really, as they self-start and run very well. The flywheels are good though, just so the engines run very smoothly at low RPM. I've mentioned in previous episodes that once I've finished these engines, I'm going to sell them on my website and donate 100% of the proceeds to a charity called Candle Lighters. The Candle Lighters link is on screen if you want to check it out. It's a great organisation and the charity helps children with cancer. This is one permutation I haven't shown. But what I'm trying to illustrate here is that the more triangulation you have on the belt, the more powerful and less likely to slippage the transmission will be. Every other method that I tried was not successful. Here's the base I propose to use, two pieces of stainless steel, and I've temporarily fitted the engines onto these two wooden blocks just to illustrate the point that you can get better triangulation if you raise the position of the engines. So here is the plan. I'm going to supply these two engines as two Blackgates twins, ready to go, complete with a reversing valve, but I will also supply the bases and all the other apparatus to maximise the transmission applications. For instance, here's one, three large pulleys. This would work well too. There are a couple of minor problems if I link these engines permanently. It limits the flexibility of sail, for instance. Someone may want to use the individual engines to drive a twin screw boat. Someone else may need them linked together to drive a very large propeller in a very large tugboat application. But when these engines are put up for sale on the website, they will be fitted with the original flywheels, and they will also be fitted with a pair of these. These are microcosm reversing valve regulators. I'm going to fit one of these to each engine so the engines will work independently, but if each of the regulators are connected to a separate radio control servo, they will work together or independently depending on the switching system in the transmitter. Normally reversing valves are held to the engines just by the piping but I don't want to do this so I'm going to make a special support. With a piece of brass in the chuck of the Boxford lathe I'm making the first of the supports. To make these supports I'm using a piece of brass hexagon bar just because it's nearly the right size. After centre drilling and then drilling part of the way down with a half inch diameter drill I'm turning down the outside diameter so it doesn't look too clumsy. Quite a lot of the support will be taken by the piping to the engine, as well as the steam inlet from the boiler and the exhaust output to the condenser, which would be sufficient, but I still think this is a better idea. In this clip I'm using a boring bar to bore out the piece of brass to accept the base of the reversing valve, and in no time at all the hole in the piece of brass is just the right size to fit the reversing valve. So that's one done, I just need to part it off. 
I've speeded this section up just to get through it, although you can part off brass fairly quickly. Once I'd done this, I made another part identical to the first. Now it's over to the milling machine because I need to mill a slot in one side of this, and as I need to do this twice, I'm moving the part to the end of the machine vise, so when I mill the slot in the second part, they will both be identical. And to make sure of this, I'm setting up the longitudinal block on the milling table. This will only allow the table to move so far, and here I am milling the part. How do I know whether this is in the middle of the part? Well, I looked at it with my eye, and my eye tells me that it is. But if you want the centralization to be more accurate, then use the vernier dials on the hand wheels. Just move the milling cutter to one of the jaws on the machine vise, check the number on the vernier hand wheel dial, then move the cutter to the other jaw on the machine vise and check the numbers again. Then move the cutter back into a position that is midway between the two points. Or like me, you can just use the calibrated eye, and you get that by practicing. And here you see the reason why I needed to mill a slot. And this clip shows both of the supports with the reversing valve sat in position. Each of these supports will be connected via some sort of a link to the brass bases of each of the engines. More about that in a forthcoming episode. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.